So we've talked throughout chapters 2, 3, and 4 about this idea of the relational data warehouse. But what we haven't really seen are the pros and cons of it. Should you use one? What are the alternatives? How is it implemented? And so let's kind of get into that for this particular video. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons. Now you, I hope, remember the UDM. Uh, we talked about this in Chapter 4, the Unified Dimensional Model. Uh, and it was yet another three-letter acronym, <laughs> Y-A-T-L-A. <laughs> All right, so... Here's an example of UDM, the Unified Dimensional Model, without a relational data warehouse. Okay, so if you'll remember, I'm assuming you watched those videos. I mean, they were, uh, I did kind of say you got to watch those, right? So this is the, our OLTP systems, right? And so that would be our SQL Server data entry, our uh, Oracle server that's running the database for the website, uh, you know. Uh, etc. And then we have our multi-dimensional cube down here. So this would be our OLAP. And then over here would be the actual people using the data. So these are our users. These are the client machines, right? In our model, that was a reporting server because that was the the most likely interface with it, but it could have been somebody using Excel just hooking directly up to the cube uh, and working with it, right? In this example, there is no relational data warehouse. There is a multi-dimensional data warehouse, and that's all we that's all we see here. Okay, so in this one, there are really three layers if you want to think about it: an OLTP layer, an OLAP layer, and then the clients. And the OLAP layer is a multi-dimensional OLAP. Okay? Now, the pros of doing this, this is a, not a bad system at all. So this is easy to understand. It's easy to diagram to other people. Here's the layout that our company follows. People can understand the purpose of the cube, right? The whole idea of the cube is to make for a unified location to run your queries and reports against, right? I mean, that's the whole... That, that's the basic tenet of the unified dimensional model here. There's also no additional storage or hardware or support requirements. You don't have to have another server that stores yet another database. Okay? So therefore, you've kind of lowered your costs, if you will. Now, the cons on this one are fairly significant, if you ask me. The problem with this is, as let's just like isolate on one of these guys. Let's say that this is our uh, SQL Server um, web database, right? So this is where we take orders in the website. So the website has been on for five years. Got just a small amount of data, you know, like a, uh, 20 gigs. Okay. Um, what's our growth rate? Is it 10% per year? Are we doing 100% per year? Uh, are we expecting popularity because we're about to acquire some pretty hot domain names and we expect a lot more traffic to come in? Okay. What's going to happen eventually if we stay in business? That's going to become a 100 gig database, a 200 gig database, a 500 gig database. And what happens with that? The more records you put in, no matter how much well you optimize it, the faster or the slower it's going to take for your queries to run. Where a query was only having to go through 5 million records in 2010, now it's having to go through 50 million records to come up with the same answer in 2015, 2013, 2012, whatever your growth rate is, right? So if there's no way to archive data out of it, then you have to start deleting the data. And that's probably not a place you want to be. You usually want to archive this data. So there's no way to archive it. You're keeping it in the same database. Or I have a client right now that's going through a rather curious thing. They have decided to do exactly this, except for they're going to put another database right here. They're going to make a new server. Where's my pen? There it is, sorry. Um, they're going to put another database over here, and that's going to become their archive database. They're not doing data warehousing, though. Like, this is not part of their data warehousing project. This is just their archive database. And I have tried and tried to explain the, the fallacy, the, the issues of what this is going to mean for them, that they'll be doing this all over again in a few years, but don't listen. So uh, so archiving is very, very important. It's like planning for success. 
right? So we expect that the database is going to grow. Therefore, you know, two years out, we need to have some sort of a plan for what we're going to do once the database reaches a certain threshold. We need to start archiving the data, right? Now let's also talk about this idea here of detail analytics reports. Okay. Up until now, we've really just focused on the idea of pre-calculated aggregates. Right. We've talked about our reporting from the executive level, from the C-level folks, the CEO, the CTO, the CIO, uh, right? Uh, and that they're looking for less detail. They want higher up aggregates of the data. You know what, though, your team leaders, your lower level managers, uh, even some of the upper level managers, when a problem comes up, they need to look at the actual details, not aggregates. They need to look at details. And what they'll need to do is, as you have all these different data sources, I need to be able to collect all of these together into a single report. I need to be able to query, like uh, if this is the customer relationship database, the CRM, the customer relationship management database, um, uh, this is our HR database, and this is our web database, or, you know, pick whatever names you have for your own projects. We need to run a detailed report that shows which employees are interfacing with which customers to come up with which web orders. Right. We need to see the details. We might need to do some uh, surveys and we want to see you know, individual orders. We want to ask intelligent questions. Okay, when you do that, now look what you have to do. You have to have some really smart query writers, some really good report writers, because now they have to aggregate, wrong word, they have to union, they have to join data from potentially multiple data sources, certainly multiple databases, and that's going to be very difficult for them to do. Right? So when you need that detail report, you're not going through the cube here. You're having your clients go directly into these data sources, right? They don't need the pre-calculated aggregates. So you have to have better query writers to be able to do that. You have to have people versed in multiple languages, people who know multiple databases, or a team that works together to come up with this. Now, what about the performance of these systems? You know, this is actually a big uh, part of this as well. Your users now are having to directly access these systems to run 10 million row reports, rows that access 50 million rows. Rows, uh, queries that do that take a long time to run. And you get into the idea of blocking on the website. Now, if you've been around databases for any length of time, you've understood how blocking can affect readers or writers, okay? But I'll give you a, oh gosh, I, I don't even know what this would be called, a, a, something that you should remember. <laughs> All right, so readers block writers and writers block readers. Meaning that if I'm trying to read a row of data, that prevents someone else from writing to that row at the same time. That person has to wait until I'm finished before they can write over. Okay, So I have to get a consistent copy of the data. Okay? And the same thing happens if somebody's in the middle of changing a last name. I can't read it until they are finished changing the last name. So writers block readers. Now, yes, I know, those of you savvy enough to know, know that there are certain switches and things that we can do that mean that, you know what, this doesn't really happen. Um, but by default, this is the way that all database systems work. Readers block writers and writers block readers. Okay? So when we start talking about the uh, ability for our clients to go directly to the OLTP systems, we're affecting the performance of those OLTP systems. We're certainly affecting the performance of our report writers. Now, what about the idea of business rules? You know, we've got a certain set of business rules in the CRM. That might be a, a third-party application. And so we've imported our own business rules that say, you know, the country has to be United States. Um, you can't add an order that doesn't have order details whatever you can think of for business rules, right? A certain way of calculating uh, amount due. We count amount due at the invoice level down to two decimal places. 
Um, but here in our web database, it might actually be calculated differently. It might be USA. This might be one that we hand wrote, uh, one of the teams wrote. Um, so it's USA. Uh, now we do decimals at the invoice level at for, uh, for order amounts at four decimal places. I don't know. I'm just kind of making stuff up off of the top of my head. But here's the thing. If you want to come up with a consistent report, a consistent detail report now, you have to know the individual idiosyncrasies of each data entry system. So your query now has to say, oh yeah, that's a two decimal number and this is a four decimal. And so I need to round the four decimal to two decimal. Or I need to coalesce everything that says either United States, USA, or US and make that a single country. And guess what? We're back right here. We're right here at needing better trained query and report writers to do that. You're talking about true experts now, what you're having to have. And particularly the more that you get for these data sources, if you get more and more data sources, right? You, you get a new company that came in, you join with another department, uh, now you've got to manage multiple things just more burden on those people writing the reports and doing the queries. Okay. All right, so I'm not trying to come down on not using a relational data warehouse. I'm trying to point out the, the realities of the game. And this is definitely one of those things you have to be very cognizant of when you're working with the data warehousing solutions. Okay. Now, let's shift. Let's now talk about using the unified dimensional model, right? So here's our analysis services server. But now we have our relational data warehouse. This is our layer of abstraction in between the data entry systems and what our clients generally work with. So the idea now is the clients that do analytics are coming into the cube, right? That's their general uh, interface. They're going right into here. Let me just take a look. We've got four layers now. We have the OLTP. We have a relational OLAP. That's what's in, I guess that's pink right there. Right? And then we have our multi-dimensional OLAP. And then we have the clients. 